Okay, I've already done quite a long video on perfect competition, but I thought for those that just want a quick review and feel like you kind of understand it, I'm just going to do a shorter version for you. Right, so perfect competition, a market structure where there is 0% concentration. What are the characteristics? Well, whenever we do market structures, characteristics, conduct using diagrams, and then performance evaluation using efficiencies. Right, characteristics in perfect competition. Well, there are homogeneous goods being made. All goods are exactly the same regardless of who's producing them. Okay, no firm can gain any price-making power by making a differentiated good. Impossible. All goods are the same, therefore firms have got no control over the price they set. Firms are known as price takers. There are many buyers and sellers. Okay, a key thing there is loads and loads of sellers. Lots and lots of small firms. There are no barriers to entry or exit. If firms want to get in or leave, they can do so completely free of charge. There's perfect information for both buyers and sellers, so if the price changes, consumers know straight away as to firms. And if technologies change or cost information changes or whatever happens in firms, other producers know exactly what's changed straight away. We also assume firms to be profit maximizers, consumers to be utility maximizers. Right, let's go into conduct. What then happens uh, within firms? Well, we know firms are price takers. Because homogeneous goods are being made, they have no influence over the price. If they try to change their price, they would lose out massively, whether they increase or decrease their price. So they have no choice but to take the price from the market. The force of demand and supply in the market determine a price where the equilibrium is, demand equals supply. That price the firm is forced to take and to charge at. Okay, so that's what it does. There's the market on the left, there's the, the firm on the right. Okay, the firm has got normal cost curves, the marginal cost curve as we know, average cost as we know, but its demand curve is now totally elastic, perfectly elastic, because of the fact that they're pure price takers. They have no influence over the price, hence the curve is completely horizontal. But the firms are profit maximizers. So if we go to the firm, they will produce at the point where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Okay, that's our profit maxing point. And that occurs, I'll do it in red, here. Okay, so now our demand curve is our average revenue, average revenue curve. It's also a marginal revenue curve. I explained that in the previous video on revenue. Have a look at that if you want to understand why. All right, so that's our marginal revenue curve, flat, going all the way across. It's also our price, our demand curve is also the price line, um, and our marginal cost is there. So that's where the profit max point is. At that level, <coughs> um, that's the quantity being produced. We now need to work out whether profits are being made. Well, yes, they are. How do we know that? Well, we compare average revenue to average cost at the point of production. Well, at the point of production, average revenue is at the red dot here, but our average cost at that point of production, that level of Q2, is actually way down there. So that vertical distance tells us the unit profit being made, and the shaded area tells us the total profit being made. And that area is super normal profit being made. The problem is though, is that that can't last in the short run for a perfectly competitive firm because there are no barriers to entry and exit, and there's perfect information. So other people out there, other producers out there that aren't in the market at the moment are going to think, well, look at these firms making amazing super normal profits. Let me get in and make a bit of that as well. Let me have a, a piece of that pie too. So they think, well, it's free for me to get into the market. Let me get in and make some of this profit myself. So they do. And as more and more firms get into the market, what happens? Well, supply then shifts to the right, to S2, which then creates a new price in the market, a lower price in the market, and a new quantity in the market. And what does that do? Well, it leads to this firm having to accept this brand new price, the price of P2. And that price of P2, if we follow this blue line across, takes us to a profit max point at Q4 where MC equals MR, and at profit max point Q4, where the red dot is, okay, the marginal cost is at the red dot, and so is the average revenue. Okay, so we have demand, which is also the average revenue, and the marginal revenue. 
So at that point, there are normal profits being made. Okay? I just assumed that in the short run, super normal profits were being made. The price just happened to be at a point where the firm was making super normal profits. Okay? Maybe that's a okay, case, so you know, demand is increased for the product or something, where super normal profits can be made in the short run. The problem is that that signals new firms to get in there to erode that super normal profit back into normal profit. If we assumed that firms are making a loss in the short run, well, simply supply would shift left as firms now leave the industry. And that will again shift the price up back to normal profit levels. So the key thing to take away here, if I just quickly rub all this down, I'll just draw two new diagrams. What then is the long run equilibrium? Okay, all of that is fine, one and good in the short run, but the key thing to take away is well, what happens in the long run. So again, we need two diagrams. One which is going to show the market and one which is going to show what happens in the firm. Okay, so again we have our normal demand and supply, which tells us a quantity Q1 and a price P1. Well, we now know that that price, which is P1, if we just draw that price across, well that is the average revenue, marginal revenue, and it's the demand. Right, well we know in the long run that only normal profits can be made. All right, so if I draw my average cost, okay, that wasn't very good, let's try that again. Average cost, just to be tendential, there we go, that's better. Okay, so in the long run what we have is that profit maximizing firms, again, produce what MC equals MR, which is over there. That gives us a quantity value, call that Q2. And now if you look at profits, well, there's average cost, which is over there. And our average revenue is also at the same point. There are normal profits being made. Average cost equals average revenue. Okay, so in the long run, perfectly competitive firms are defined, their conduct is defined by normal profit. That's one way to look at it in the long run. Okay, and that's the basic diagram you need to take away. Now we need to look at performance evaluation, and to do that, we look at efficiencies. Right, so we know allocative efficiency occurs where the price is equal to the marginal cost at the level of production. Right, so there's a the level of production, a Q2, that red dot. At that point, is the price equal to the marginal cost? Well, yes, it is. Absolutely. Okay, we know the price is also the average revenue curve, which is equal to marginal cost. Because price is equal to MR in this case, of course, always, MR is going to equal MC. And because in perfect competition, MR is also the price, price must always equal MC. So allocative efficiency, P equals MC, is always being met. Good, very good for consumers. What about product efficiency? Well, we know productive efficiency occurs where um, production takes place at the lowest possible point on the average cost curve. Firms are exploiting all possible economies of scale available to them. And again, we can see the red dot, that's exactly what's happening. So productive efficiency, yes. We go one stage further, we look at X efficiency. Okay, so what about X efficiency? Well, we know that occurs at any point on the average cost curve. As long as the firm is on the average cost curve somewhere, that's fine. Well, obviously, they're being productively efficient, they must also be being X efficient. Good. What about dynamic efficiency? That's another add-on. Well, we know the condition here for dynamic efficiency is that there must be super normal profits being made for those profits to then be reinvested in unit costs to be lowered over time. Well, in this sense, there are only normal profits being made, so no, there is no chance for perfectly competitive firms to be dynamically efficient. Okay, that's one of the drawbacks, you could say, to this market structure. So in the long run, what defines conduct in perfectly competitive market structures? Well, one, normal profits. Average cost always equals average revenue in the long run. And, all, and also, there is allocative efficiency always in the long run. That's perfect content very quickly for you. See you next time.